Okay, so a little bit of introduction first, because uh, many people will think that I'm trying to convince you to switch to KDE or that I think that everybody should switch to KDE, and that is not the case at all. I've actually used GNOME for quite a while, if you follow my channel, you know that. And I do think that GNOME is a great option. I do think that both projects are worth using and you should use one depending on your personal preferences. However, at the same time, I think there are a lot of people that are coming into the Linux world and that are maybe not too sure whether they should use one over another. So here's what I think should be like the convincing factor when you're trying to decide whether to use KD Plasma or GNOME. And the fact is that these two projects are both really good in my opinion, but also both very different. So if you recognize yourself into this distinction that I'm going to talk about, then you should use like KD Plasma. If you don't, then you should use GNOME because that's also an awesome project. Don't get me wrong. So as a basis to start talking about this, together with my knowledge of KD Plasma, because that's what I mostly used. I'm also took, um, using a Reddit thread on the KD subreddit, which actually asked why are you using KD Plasma over GNOME to KD Plasma users? I think that also provides some insight. And the first and major reason is customization and in customization extensions in particular. So let me give a quick um, overview of the differences when you're talking about customizations in KD Plasma and in GNOME because you do you can customize both but um, it's very different how you do it so in KD Plasma you have the concept of themes and each and every thing can be can kind of have its own theme like as an example you have the plasma theme to customize how um, the desktop itself looks you have application themes to customize how application look then you have an icon set to customize the icons you have a cursor set to customize your mouse these kind of things for each of these you have this little um, theme that you can just download and apply via UI, nothing, you don't have to install anything. At the same time, you also have the concept of plasmoids and of containers. So uh, take the panel as an example, inside of the panel, you have lots of icons and those are called plasmoids. The fact is that K Plasma is pretty much the only desktop where you can actually actively customize those plasmoids apart from more niche uh, Linux desktops like XFC, that kind of things. But talking about K Plasma. You can change the position of the icons, you can change um, also the size and position of the container, which is the panel itself. You can also place those widgets on the desktop because the desktop is also a container. So it is very customizable. Uh, also all applications, you can customize them. You do all you do have whole, uh, all of this range of customizability, which is built in and KD Plasma is designed to be customized. GNOME takes a very different approach. Uh, by itself, GNOME is not meant to be customized, I think. Like, it doesn't have any UI that addresses customizations uh, that is beyond what the GNOME developers wanted, and that is usually a very conservative take. And for many people, that is fine. They are fine with the default of GNOME. Other people would like to change some aspect. Myself, when I tried GNOME, I did want to change a couple of things. So GNOME actually addresses that through the use of extensions. Now, to install extensions, personally, I installed the extension manager, which is a third party application, I think. You can also do that via GNOME integration with a browser using the GNOME store. It is not as well integrated, I think, um, as the KDE store. So you can already see that extensions are slightly more first, uh, slightly less first party compared to what you have in, with uh, themes in KDE Plasma. Nonetheless, you have extensions, and the fact is that extension can customize pretty much anything. So you want to have a different order of icons, then you have to have an extension for that. You want to have blur on the background, you have to use extension. Everything falls underneath these extensions. You do not have this modularity that KD has, like having distinct themes for different things. You just have extensions. Now here's the issue, which is actually the first comment in the Reddit thread. That is, I'm tired of extensions extensions, and shell themes getting hosed every update. Extensions use uh, the GNOME API, and it seems like at each update, some changes in how GNOME works might break uh, extensions, and that seems to happen frequently. So every time you update, you don't have the certainty of everything still working. 
Whereas if you use Kitty Plasma, yes, there might be some new bugs introduced by the update, obviously, but your themes are supported in any uh, release. Like, unless you're going from Plasma 5 to Plasma 6, any other kind of release will, <laughs> your themes will still work because they are designed to work. Whereas extensions, it's more, again, it's a bit less first party, it seems. They are very nicely integrated with GNOME, but sometimes they feel more of a hack that is added to try to deal with customization rather than what KDE does, which is actually implementing uh, like customization from the start with thinking about the customization, how to do it, these kind of things. Of course, this comes with a downside. That is, KDE Plasma is extremely complex. Even code-wise, like I'm a developer and I can tell you that if we didn't have themes, it would be so much easier to do everything. And I can understand why GNOME might not want to have themes for everything. Like it takes time to actually do that stuff. And that is time that could be used uh, elsewhere. And the fact that you have so many uh, customizations to test uh, possible different setups means that it's harder to actually catch bugs because maybe some bugs only happen if you have that setting enabled and that setting enabled. So. KD Plasma, I think, in my opinion, is less stable compared to GNOME, also because it has so many customizations and options. So it is a very good thing that you can customize out of the box very nicely it works. It has the downside of being less stable overall, in my opinion. But again, GNOME's extensions break every update, so that's not very stable either. You could uh, make an argument for both. The second thing that is very, very often said is that I like the tradition a traditional, traditional desktop. And I do not like this Android thing that GNOME is doing. Now, I actually f strongly disagree with this one. I do not think that GNOME is doing a bad thing at all going for this Android, if you want to call it that way, design. However, I do realize that it's very personal. And although for me it works, for you it might not. So KD Plasma and GNOME are very different in its layout. You can just look at them. They're completely different. So KD Plasma is more of a traditional design again. So if you've used a Windows in the past at any time, KD Plasma layout by default is much more similar to that compared to GNOME that is very much doing their own thing. And KD Plasma really just works like a desktop, like you would expect if you ever used a traditional desktop. It's nothing surprising. GNOME is very different. And you see that even from the fact that a, you don't have uh, files on your desktop. You cannot put files on your desktop unless you use an extension again. But uh, that is already a very opinionated um, workflow. And if you like that, you will like that. If you don't, you don't. Personally, I never use files on my desktop, so it's fine to me. But other people might want them and might not want to use an extension for that. Another example, you don't have any minimize button unless you install an extension again. Why don't you have any minimize button? So the idea is that instead of minimizing application, you should use multiple virtual desktops. So whenever you're done with a task or uh, you want to just pause it for a second, instead of minimizing the applications that you um, use for that task, you switch to a new virtual desktops, you open more application there. And if you need the previous ones, instead of remaximizing them, you just switch to the previous virtual desktops. Again, that is something that I personally really like. That is how I also work on KD Plasma. However, it's very opinionated again. And if you're not into that sort of workflow, you might not like GNOME and you might prefer KD Plasma that offers a more traditional approach with minimizing application and minimize button, files on your desktop, all of that. You can also, you know, customize it so that it works more like GNOME. Of course, it won't be GNOME because GNOME is GNOME and that's it. But it kind of offers both kind of workflows, just what you prefer. Then there is the KDE ecosystem. KDE, if you, if you just count the number of applications in KDE ecosystem and GNOME ecosystem, I think that actually GNOME wins. They have a lot of applications, especially if you count the GNOME circle, which is this uh, onboarding thing that they do for a third party application, which is super nice. They have lots of applications either for niche use cases. However, the strength of the KDE um, ecosystem of applications is that those applications that are meant for KDE are extremely powerful and can do a variety of tasks and they do it really well. So much so that I 
often hear about people who would like to use Kit applications on other desktops or even other operating systems as well. And the cool thing is that you can, you just can do that. They, they are designed to work not just in Kitty Plasma, but wherever. So why am I saying that? So take a text editor as an example. Kitty simple text editor is called Kate. Gnome simple text editor is, I forgot the name, it was gedit, but now it's different, right? It's the Gnome text editor, I don't know. So Kate is actually like hundreds of times more powerful than the Gnome text editor. It has so many features that you would normally expect only from like a powerful IDE, but it's actually all packed nicely to um, a normal text editor that is still very simple to use if you don't want any super customizable thing. So you have stuff like block mode that allows you to select a lot of things at the same time. You have multiple cursors, you have V mode, you have, uh, you know what, I've done an entire two videos actually about all the Kate features. You can just go check those out. Believe me, it's extremely powerful and it's not just Kate, it's also Dolphin. It's not just an application, an application to see files, it's an application to see file done right, like terribly right. So personally, I think that the core KD applications, Kate, Dolphin, and so on, beat the GNOME applications anytime. That is my personal preference. But of course, if you prefer something that is, again, simple, and that, uh, that just does your task without offering any uh, additional uh, option that you might need, but maybe you don't, then GNOME's applications are very fine too. And remember that you can always use KD applications on GNOME if you're for any reason, you know, undecided on which one you should use. Another reason that it's often said is that KD Plasma is lighter on resources. However, for this one, I don't really want to take it as an argument because I have no hard data to prove this. And actually, when I try to use GNOME on very low hand devices, such as the Pinebook, yes, it was a bit slower compared to Kitty Plasma, but with the very recent developments and help with Ubuntu, it seems like GNOME improved a lot. So the situation might have changed. So keep in mind that in the past, GNOME was struggling with resources, but right now the situation might be completely different. Test uh, if test with, really, you should test which um, desktop works best on your machine. It's very easy to just try them out without installing them. I've talked about customization. I also want to mention that KD has this philosophy of having a lot of options, which is a different thing. Like customization is having themes and stuff, being able to customize the appearance mostly of stuff. Options are like how things behave in practice. And that is a different topic. And Kelly Hagen has lots of options trying to work for as many people as possible. So if you're looking for some sort of more niche use case, you should totally check out KDE because it tries to offer as much as possible. Whereas GNOME, again, has that opinionated workflow that if it works for you, it will work super nicely. But if it doesn't, it, it just won't. Again, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I, I love it actually, but it really depends on you. To make a simple ex uh, example. So say that you are used to some, uh, this Macintosh is, Macintosh-ish, I think, behavior where if you click the active task on your task manager, well, usually in most desktops, doing that will just minimize the application. But in Macintosh, actually nothing happened. So in Kitty Plasma, you can actually customize what happens if you click on the active window in your task manager. That's such a niche use case, right? But it's still covered by Kitty Plasma. And you can choose a couple of options. And let me check them out again. Yeah, you can choose whether it should minimize or not. You can also customize stuff as how much space should there be between one task manager icon and the next one. Again, that's up to you. You can choose between small, normal, large. And if you don't like those values, there are third party plasma themes that can customize that. There's a lot of stuff. But again, this means that there's more configuration to test. There's a uh, more stuff to maintain, there's more code, there's more stuff to, there's more stuff that can go wrong and it's harder to find the bugs each time. There's a lot of effort in KDE to try to address all the bugs and all the issues, don't get me wrong, but if you have a simple opinionated workflow like GNOME does, I think it's much easier to have it more stable and bug-free. When I used GNOME, I actually didn't notice any bug at all, almost. 
but uh, I think some of the bugs that I saw was caused by extensions because again, extensions could cause bugs. KD Plasma, sometimes I do meet uh, KD Plasma bugs. I try to fix them whenever possible, but you know, if you want something that works out of the box for sure and that will never annoy you in any way, then GNOME is more likely to be what you're looking for. But if you're looking for something that will adapt you and your workflow, KD Plasma is probably more um, for you. To summarize it up, there's a lot of people saying that GNOME is missing a lot of features. And although you could argue for that, the thing is not that they're missing the features, is that they don't want them. They have their idea of how the desktop should work like, whereas KD doesn't uh, try to force you to any particular workflow. It tries to make sure that the default one is as good as possible, but it allows you to customize it uh, in various ways. And of course, it, that has benefits and downsides. So that is it for this video. Thanks everybody for following along and uh, see you tomorrow with yet another one.